We're looking at the Ma Honors Math 2 Unit 0 uh, Fall Final Review. We're starting on number 47. So we need to simplify, and it says no negative exponents. So when I look at this, I like to move things around first, get rid of the negative exponents. Um, so I could take that x squared, which is going to stay. The x to the negative 3 is going to come up to be x to the third on top. And then the y to the negative 4 and y to the negative 6 actually switch places. You can also use the rule we have about um, division leading to the subtraction of exponents, but I kind of like making them all positive. So now when I look at it, I get x to the 5th on top because I have 5 x's. And then I have y to the 6 over y to the 4th. There's two more on top, so when it reduces, it'll be y squared. So it's x to the 5th y squared. For b, the first thing I need to do is distribute out that 3 exponent to all the terms. So I have negative 2 to the 3rd, a to the 3rd, and that's b to the negative 6th. Bring in everything else, and then just count up what I have. I have a to the 3rd, and a to the 3rd gives me a to the 6th. This is negative 7, negative 6 is a negative 13, with a negative 1 gives me b to the negative 12th. And then negative 2 to the 3rd with the negative on the inside is going to be negative 8 to the th negative 8. That's just 8. Now, positive exponents, only the b moves. The negative 8 just is a value. It only has an exponent of 1, so that does not move. So it's negative 8, a to the 6th over b to the 12th. For number 48, we need to simplify it into um, radical form. So. I'm going to take x to the 2 thirds. When it's the 6th root, that means it's to the 1 sixth. Since it's an exponent to an exponent, I'm going to multiply 2 thirds times 1 sixth, which becomes 2 over 18, or 1 ninth. So that equals x to the 1 ninth. For b, it's going to be 6 to the 1 tenth times 6 to the 3 fifths. I'm going to change it to make it 1 tenth plus 6 tenths, because the, I'm adding the exponents, they got to have like denominators. So that becomes 7 tenths, so my answer is 6 to the 7 tenths. For C, it becomes x to the 1 third times 2, which equals x to the 2 thirds. For number 49, I'm going to simplify down, I'm going to change this over to radical form, because right now this is 16, the cube root of 16 squared, or the cube root with 16 squared on the inside. Now, since it is cube root, I'm looking for sets of three to take it out. Uh, 16 squared, I know 16 is four times four squared, so I actually have four fours. Or I could break those down to twos, and I have the cube root of eight twos. Now, since it's cube root, I take sets of 3 out, so I have two of them coming out. 2 times 2 is 4, and I'm left with the cube root of two of them, so the cube root of 4. So it's 4, cube root 4. For b, I'm going to change this to be the cube root of 27 squared, and why I pick that is 27 is 3 times 3 times 3, so this actually just becomes 3 squared, which is 9. The square root of 18 is 9 times 2, or 3 times 3 times 2. The 3's come out, and so my answer is 3 root 2. For 50, I need to find um, with square root of 3, square root of 7, 11, and 13, see if I have some true or false statements. So all the numbers are real numbers. That is true. Um, all the numbers are rational numbers, that is false. All the numbers are irrational, that is true. If it's irrational, then it is not rational. And then all the numbers are integers, that is false. They are real numbers, as in they're not imaginary. That's actually the square root of a negative. But they are not integers because they are radicals. For 51a, I'm going to multiply the numbers on the outside of the radical. I'm going to multiply the numbers on the inside of the radical. So I get negative 10 from 5 times negative 2 times the square root of 21. Now 21 is 3 times 7, so that does not simplify. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. For b, same thing. I get a negative 35 and then the square root of 36. Now the square root of 36 I can simplify. That becomes 6. 
And so we get 35 times 6 is negative 210. For C, I'm going to simplify the numbers in, uh, outside, and that's going to be a 2 over 1, because 6 over 3. And then the square root of 45 over the square root of 5 is going to become the square root of 9 after I reduce uh, within the fraction, or the radicals. Now, square root of 9 is 3, so it becomes 2 times 3. The answer is 6. For D, I'm going to add like terms. So 8 and 5 are integers. I can add those and get 13. Now, the square root of 3 we have to be careful with. It's saying that we have two square roots of 3. So I write 2 root 3. If you're not sure about this, just imagine if this was x and x. If that was x, we'd say it's 2x. Same idea here. We're not going to make them the square root of 6. That's not how radicals work. So it should be 13 plus 2 root 3. For e, I'm going to distribute out this negative, so make that a negative 5 and change it to a plus 2 root 13 and combine terms. 7 minus 5 is 2, and then negative 9 and 2 gives me negative 7 root 13. For number 52, I'm going to change them all to exponential form. And so that 11 over 7 fifths, this is really saying I would add these two exponents to get to this one. So by dropping the bases, I see it's this type of problem. So what do I have to have for the denominator? Well, if I had 3 fifths plus 4 fifths, that would equal 7 fifths. So if my denominator is 5, it works and the, the equation is true. For 52b, we're going to do the same idea, but now it's a subtraction. So it becomes 7 to the 5 twelfths over 7 to the 1 third equals 7 to the 1x. Since it's division, it's going to be 5 twelfths minus 1 third equals 1 over x. I'm going to make like denominators by saying 5 twelfths minus 4 twelfths equals 1 over x. And if I simplify this left-hand side, it comes out to be 1 over 12 equals 1 over x, so x is 12. Now for 53, we need to select all the expressions that are equivalent to what we have here. And I'm going to simplify this first. So it's 8 to the 2 thirds is the cube root of 8 squared. The cube root of 8 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I could rewrite this as a 4 there. Then x squared to the 2 thirds, I multiply, and that becomes x to the 4 thirds, which is one option. Or in um, exponential form, I can call that the cube root of x to the 4th. By simplifying that, I can take out three of those x's, and it becomes x cube root x. So either of those are in other ways I can look at this. And why I like the exponential form is that's kind of what we're looking at here. You know what? I'm even going to throw in the 4 cube root of x to the fourth just in case it shows up. So now I can see which things match. Now, if something does not have a 4 as a coefficient, it's automatically out. I'm not going to use that. So for example, like e, it's asking for the cube root of 2. And I'm not even worried about the x. I'm just looking at the 2. That's not going to work. Um, if we look at this one, b, I have the cube root of 8 is going to be a 2, so there's going to be a 2 on the outside. That doesn't work. 4 here, good. 4 here is good. This one, the cube root of 8 is 2, but it's squared, so that one is going to be true. So the 8 here is actually 8 to the 2 thirds, so that one's still in, in, in contention. So all of those work so far with the 4s because we've, we've checked. So now we're looking for the x to be in the right format. So look here, I got x, the cube root of x to the fourth, that matches, so I'm good here. If I look at answer C, this is the exact one as my middle answer I had up at the top, that one's good there. On this one, the x term is the cube root of x to the fourth, which matches, so A is going to work as well. And it's just breaking it apart to those little pieces. Focus on the coefficients, then focus on the variables, you can kind of take them apart and see what your best option is. Now for 54, I'm going to change them to exponential form. Right, before I do that, I'm just going to leave it as radical. So I have 2 times 2 and x to the fifth. Uh, 
So here I now have the fourth root of 4x to the fifth. x is going to be to the 5 fourths, so that's one way I can go through and check to see what works, and that actually eliminates all of those. Um, but I'm looking at 2 to the 2 fourths, what does that mean? Well, actually if I go back up to this, that was saying I had 2 squared in the fourth root, which is 2 to the 2 fourths, which matches what I wanted. So it was 2 to the 2 fourths and x to the 5 fourths. Now, 2 to the 2 fourths is not the proper form. We would actually write x to the 1 half, but we got the right idea from that. For 55, I'm going to look at the 1 thirds. The 1 thirds are not in the exponents, so that's going to become 1 ninth. So from that, that actually eliminates uh, most of my options. I'm looking at this one. And then I got x to the 1 fourth, x to the 2 thirds. I'm going to add exponents, 1 fourth plus 2 thirds. Their like denominator is going to be 12. So that will be uh, 3 twelfths and then 8 twelfths, which comes out to be 11 twelfths. So that's 1 ninth x to the 11 twelfths or 1 ninth the 12th root of x to the 11th. C is my answer. For 56, we have to distribute, and we have to be careful with our exponent rules. What we're actually doing is rewriting this as 8 to the 1 third times 8 to the, I'm going to change this to exponential and go 2 thirds, plus 8 to the 1 third times 8 squared. And that's taking this term times this one, this term times this one. And I'm not multiplying the exponents as distributing. What I'm doing is multiplying the whole term. So now that I'm here, I'm going to add exponents. 1 third plus 2 thirds is 1. So it's just 8 to the first. Uh, 1 third and 2 becomes 1 third plus 6 thirds, which is 7 thirds. And I can see what I have here. Now, um, 8 to the 7 thirds I know is my last term, so those are gone. Looking at what I have left, I have 8 to the first needs to match one of these. Well, this is 8 to the 2 ninths, where this is 8 to the 3 over 3, which is 8 to the first. I'm going to go with C. 57, I'm going to get like bases, uh, and go exponential form. I'm going to add exponents, 3 eighths plus 2 fourths would be 4 eighths, or 7 eighths. So 5 to the 7 eighths, we're going to go with D. For 58, we need to take the options that we have, 2, 7, the radicals, 2 root 7, and 2 minus root 7, and find out ways that we can multiply to get irrationals, and add, and, and different ways we're going to solve. So multiply them to get an irrational add them to get a rational. So what can, where can we add something that's going to get rid of um, the square root, but when we multiply, we still have an irrational. I'm looking at adding, if I did root seven and two minus root seven, That comes out to be a 2, which is a rational number. If I multiplied those two, 2 minus root 7 minus times root 7, that comes out to be 2 root 7 minus 7, which is irrational. So I'm going to say my answer on this one is the 2 minus root 7 and the square root of 7. For b, multiply them to get a rational, but when you add, they're irrational. So where can we multiply to get a rational? Um, you know, two, square root of 2 square root of 7 are irrationals when I multiply and when I add, so that really doesn't help us. But to get an irrational when I add, I, I need something there. These two though, root 7 and 2 root 7, when I multiply become 2 times 7 or 14, but when I add them it become uh, 3 root 7, which does not simplify. So I'm going to say root 7 and 2 root 7. The last one is multiply them and it's irrational. And when you add them, it's irrational. I'm just going to go with the easy ones here and go root 2 plus root 7 or root 2 times root 7, which is square root of 14. Both are irrational and it works. So we have square root of 2, square root of 7. 
All right, we're going to simplify some statements, find uh, the false statements. Uh, x to the sixth over x squared. I have four more on top. It should not be x to the third. It should be x to the fourth. y squared to the fourth would be multiplying. That should be y to the eighth. So that one is false. If I have b to the negative three, that means it needs to be one over b to the third. A negative exponent moves it across the fraction. For this next one, I get x to the fifth y to the third, and then all of that is to the fourth. We're going to multiply five times four and three times four. x to the twentieth, y to the twelfth looks good. Um, so that one's actually true. The rest of them false so far. Uh, e, I'm going to multiply and I get b to the negative twentieth, which is not b to the negative one. What they did is they added there. We do not do that when it's an exponent to an exponent. So that one is false. So a, b, c, and e are all false. For 60, we're going to simplify the expression and then look for the ones that are irrational. So I'm going to start with a. I'm going to multiply and get 15 times the square root of 36. That's 15 times 6, which is 90. That is not irrational. That is a rational number. b, that's going to be 7 times 6, the square root of 36, which is 42. That is an irrational number. For C, I'm going to divide and get the square root of 5, which is irrational. For D, if I make it the cube root of 27 and then square that with the 4 out in front, cube root of 27 is 3, squared is 9, times 4 is 36. So that is a rational number. And then E, I, I can't combine those. Well, I guess I could try to simplify, actually. Square root of 18 is 2 root 9, not 2 root 9, that'd be uh, 3 root 2, try that again. So I get 3 root 2 plus 5 times 3 root 2 gives me 3 root 2 plus 15 root 2 or 18 root 2, which is still irrational, but we could simplify it a little bit further.